Hi, I'm your internet grandpa, and today we're going to read The Travels of Babar by Jean de Brunhoff. This book is actually translated from French, which is probably why Babar always seemed a little, while well, we like it a whole lot, we've always liked Babar, it always seemed a little strange the way the story was written. Quite enjoyable. I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and like these videos. That tells YouTube to put this sort of thing into your feed. So let's begin. Babar, the young king of the elephants, and his wife, Queen Celeste, have just left for their wedding trip in a balloon. Goodbye! See you soon, cry the elephants as they watched the balloon rise and drift away. Arthur, Babar's little cousin, still waves his beret. Old Cornelius, who is chief over all the elephants when the king is away, anxiously sighs. I do hope they won't have an accident. Old Cornelius. And look, they have an anchor on their balloon. Hmm. The country of the elephants is now far away. The balloon glides noiselessly in the sky. Babar and Celeste admire the landscape below. What a beautiful journey. The air is balmy. The wind is gentle. There is the ocean, the big blue ocean. See the sailboats and the ships on the ocean? Blown out over the sea by the wind, the balloon is suddenly caught by a violent storm. Babar and Celeste tremble with fear and cling with all their might to the basket of the balloon. By extraordinary good fortune, just as the balloon is about to fall into the sea, a final puff of wind blows it on an island where it flattens out and collapses. You aren't hurt, Celeste, are you? Babar inquires anxiously. No. Well, then look, we are saved. Leaving the wrecked balloon on the beach, Babar and Celeste pick up their belongings and go off to seek shelter. Having found a quiet spot, they take off their clothes. Celeste hangs them up on a line to dry, while Babar lights a good fire and prepares breakfast. That Babar, he's a pretty good husband, huh? Babar and Celeste settle themselves comfortably. They have set up their tent, and sitting on some large stones, they eat with relish an excellent rice broth, well sweetened and cooked to perfection. We are not so badly off on this island, says Babar. After breakfast, while Babar explores the surrounding country, Celeste, left alone, falls sound asleep. Just then, the inhabitants of the island, fierce and savage cannibals, suddenly discover her. What kind of strange beast is this, they say to each other. We have never seen anything like it. The meat must be very tender. Let's creep up quietly and catch it while it sleeps. The cannibals, having succeeded in tying up Celeste with a clothesline on which the clothes were drying, some dance with joy while others have great fun trying on the stolen garments. <laughs> Celeste sighs sadly. <sighs> she thinks soon she will be eaten. She does not yet see Babar, who returns, just in time to save her. Do you see Babar? I see his eyes just peeking over the hill. In the twinkling of an eye, Babar has unbound Celeste. They both hurl themselves on the cannibals. Some are wounded, others take flight. All 
are terrified. Only a few courageous ones still resist. But they are thinking, these big animals are certainly terribly strong, and their hides are mighty tough. Ooh, look. I don't know if that's Baba or Celeste got a wound on her bottom. His or her bottom. My, I'll bet that's tender. After having chased off the savages, Babar and Celeste rest themselves on the seashore. Suddenly, right in front of them, a whale comes to the surface and spouts. Babar gets up immediately and says, Good morning, Mrs. Whale. I am Babar, king of the elephants, and here is my wife, Celeste. We have had a balloon accident and have fallen here on this island. Could you help us get away? I am delighted to make your acquaintance, answers the whale, and I will be very happy if I can be of service to you. I am just leaving to visit my family in the Arctic Ocean. I will drop you wherever you like. Quick, get on my back and hold tight so you don't slip off. Are you ready? Get set. Let's go. A few days later, a little weary, they are resting on a reef. Just then, a school of little fish swims by. I'm going to eat some of these, says the whale. I'll be back in a minute. And she dives down after them. The whale has not come back. While eating the little fish, she completely forgot her new friends. She is a giddy, thoughtless creature. We were better off on the cannibal island. What will become of us now, weeps poor Celeste. Babar does his best to comfort her. After hours and hours spent on their little reef without even a drop of fresh water, they finally spy a ship passing quite near them. She is a big steamer with three funnels. Babar and Celeste call out and yell as loudly as they can, but no one hears them. They try signaling with their trunks and with their arms. Oh, will they attract someone's attention? They have been seen a lifeboat rescues them while the excited passengers all watch. Now, a ship with three funnels was considered to be faster than a ship with two, and a ship with four funnels was even faster than a ship with three funnels. But three funnels was a pretty fast ship back in the day. Each stack corresponded to an engine, and more engines meant the ship was faster, more powerful. A week later, the huge ship steams slowly into a big harbor. Oh my, look at everything in this picture. That is a very busy picture. We have somebody selling fruit here. There's cats and dogs, it looks like. Oh, maybe just all dogs. There's some children playing, a horse carriage, a car. Somebody selling something else here. My, a motorcycle, a fisherman. Boats all over the place. Look at all the houses on the other side of the harbor. And there's even some boats at the quay there. Very busy picture. All the passengers go down the gangplank. Babar and Celeste, too, would like to follow, but they are not allowed to. They have lost their crowns during the storm, so no one will believe that they are actually king and queen of the elephants. And the captain of the ship orders them locked up in the ship's stables. They give us straw to sleep on, cries Babar angrily. We are fed hay as though the, we were donkeys. The door is locked. I've had enough of this. I'm going to smash everything. Be quiet, I beg of you, says Celeste. I hear someone. It is the captain coming into the stable. 
Let's be good so he'll let us out. Here are my elephants, says the captain to the famous animal trainer, Fernando, who is with him. I cannot keep them on my ship. I give them to you for your circus. Fernando thanks the captain and leads away his two new pupils. Be patient, Babar, whispers Celeste. We will not remain long with the circus. We'll get back to our native land again, somehow, and see Cornelius and little Arthur. Now, just at this time, back in the elephant's country, little Arthur has had a mischievous idea. While Rataxes the rhinoceros was having a quiet siesta, Arthur tied a big firecracker to his tail without waking him. The firecracker explodes with a terrific bang, bang, and Rataxes leaps up into the air. Arthur, the scamp, laughs until he nearly chokes it is really a very mean trick. Rataxes is furious. Cornelius, very worried, goes to find him and says, My dear fellow, I am so sorry. Arthur will be severely punished. He begs for your forgiveness. Get away, old Cornelius, grumbles Rataxes. Don't speak to me of that scoundrel, Arthur. You elephants may think you have made fun of me. But just wait, you'll soon see. What will he do, wonders Cornelius. I feel very uneasy. He is revengeful and mean. Oh, if only Babar were here. But Babar is now far away playing the trumpet while Celeste dances in Fernando's circus. There it says Fernando's circus. One day the circus comes to the town where Babar, when he was young, had met his friend, the old lady. So, at night, while Fernando is in bed, Babar and Celeste escape and go to find her, for he has never forgotten her. Babar finds the house easily and rings the bell. The old lady awakens and puts on her wrapper, steps out on her balcony and calls, Who's there? It's Babar and Celeste, they answer her. The old lady is overjoyed. She has really believed she would never see them again. Babar and Celeste are happy too, for they will never have to go back to the circus. Soon they will be able to rejoin Arthur and Cornelius. The old lady has promised to help them. The old lady lends Celeste a nightgown and a pair of pajamas to Babar. They have just awakened after a sound sleep. Now they are having breakfast in bed for they are still quite tired after all their adventures. Goodness, went up in a balloon, crashed on an island, had to fight the cannibals, then took a ride on the back of a whale to another little island of sorts, got rescued by a ship, got put in a circus. That has been an adventure. Elephants, brown bear. At the circus, their escape has just been discovered. Stop! Thief! My elephants have been stolen! cries the excited Fernando. Little ones, oh little ones, where are you hiding? The clowns repeat and look everywhere for them. 
Babar and Celeste will not be caught again. Here they are on their way to the station with the old lady. They need a few days rest before returning to their own land. So the three of them are going to the mountains to enjoy the fresh air and try a little skiing. Oh goodness, elephants on skis. That should be very exciting. Oh, another very busy picture. Look at the skiers falling down and ice skaters. Oh, and their skiers way over there. I used to love to ski when I was a young man. That was uh, what we call BC before children when I could afford that sort of thing. <laughs> now that I'm retired, I may take it back up again. Now, Babar and Celeste have packed away their skis and said goodbye to the mountains. They are leaving by plane to return home. The old lady accompanies them. Babar has invited them as he is anxious to show her his beautiful country and the great forest where one always hears the birds singing. They have landed. The airplane has gone back. Babar and Celeste are speechless with surprise. Where are Cornelius, Arthur, and the other elephants? A few broken trees. Is that all that is left of the great forest? There are no more flowers, no more birds. Babar and Celeste are very sad and weep as they see their ruined country. The old lady understands their grief. What do you suppose happened to their country? What is going on here, inquires Babar, who has found the other elephants at last. Alas, replies Cornelius, the rhinoceroses have declared war on us. They came led by Rataxes, who wanted to catch Arthur and make mincemeat of him. We tried bravely to protect the little fellow, but the rhinoceroses were too strong for us. We do not know how to drive them off. This is indeed bad news, said Babar, but let's not give up. But real war is not a joke, and many of the elephants have been wounded. Celeste and the old lady take care of them with great devotion. The old lady is especially good at this, as she used to be a trained nurse. Babar has gone back to the front with Cornelius and some of the soldiers who have recovered to join the elephant army. The rhinoceroses are preparing to attack. A big battle will soon begin. Here is the camp of the rhinoceroses. The soldiers are awaiting orders and think, we will once again defeat the elephants when the war will be over and we can all go home. Spiteful old Rataxes maliciously says to his friend General Pamar, Ha ha ha! Pretty soon we will tweak the ears of the young King Babar and punish that rascal author. Here is the camp of the elephants. They have all found new courage and now Babar has a bright idea. He disguises his biggest soldiers by painting their tails bright red, and near their tails on either side he paints large, frightening eyes. Arthur sets to work making wigs. He works as hard as he can, so he'll be forgiven for causing all this trouble. The day of the battle at just the right moment, the disguised elephants come out of hiding, and Babar's bright idea succeeds. The rhinoceroses think they are monsters, and terrified, they retreat in great disorder. King Babar is a mighty fine general.
The rhinoceroses have fled and are still running. Pamir and Rataxes are prisoners and hang their heads in shame. What a glorious day for the elephants. In chorus, they all cry, Bravo, Babar! Bravo, victory! Victory! The war is over. How perfectly splendid. The next day, before all the elephants, Babar and Celeste, having put on their royal garments and their new crowns, reward the old lady who has been so good to them and has cared so well for the wounded. They give her 11 singing canaries and a cunning little monkey. Hmm. Canaries and a monkey. After the ceremony, Babar and Celeste and the old lady sit and chat under the palm trees. And what are we going to do next? asked the old lady. I'm going to try and rule my kingdom wisely, answers Babar. And if you will remain with us, you can help me make my subjects happy. The end. Well, I hope you like that story. We always like Babar. Like I said, he's, it, it was always a little strange reading it. I never realized it was translated from French, and that explains why. Anytime you translate things from one language to another, they get a little odd. Well, as our friend Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.